Resuming debate, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Merci, merci, Monsieur le Président. Je suis... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to rise today before the House of Commons in order to express my support for Bill C-45. Through this bill, the government is expressing its support to, is, uh, to a platform post which is legalizing and restricting access to cannabis to adults and to keep it out of the hands of youth. By noting that three separate parliamentary reports have concluded that Canada's policy on criminalization creates harms that are disproportionate to the harms associated with cannabis use. Monsieur le Président, il convient... Mr. Speaker, first of all, you must recognize that the current system is not working. Canadians, including children and young people, have the highest consumption cannabis of cannabis in the world. The current system allows for uh, the illegal market to prosper, a market that is neither regulated nor tested, and which may be very dangerous. Access to legal cannabis for adults only through a well-regulated industry or grown in limited amounts at home, our government's legislative proposal will address the disproportionate harms caused by the criminal prohibition of non-medicinal cannabis. Our goal is to protect public health and public safety of all Canadians, particularly young Canadians, Mr. Speaker. And let me be clear, Bill C-45 would restrict youth access to both legal and illicit cannabis. I would like to use the time I have to give you an overview of Bill C-45. The goal of Bill C-45, as announced in uh, Section 7, is to protect the health and public, uh, safe, public safety. Bill C-45. Through the through new legislative frameworks, which would govern and rigorously restrict access to cannabis, while punishing those who are exercising this activity outside of the scope of this act, was developed bearing in mind our government's key policy objectives to protect youth and to prevent them from accessing and using cannabis, to enhance public awareness regarding the risks of cannabis use to deter illicit activities through appropriate measures proportionate to the crime, and to reduce the burden on the criminal justice system for minor cannabis offences. Bill C-45 is divided into four parts. I beg your pardon, in a number of parts. Part 1 of Bill C-45 sets out the main criminal prohibitions, obligations, and offences relating to cannabis. More specifically, Part 1 of the bill prohibits the possession, distribution, sale, production, importation, and exportation of cannabis. For example, Clause 8 of Bill C-45 establishes a general prohibition on cannabis possession subject to certain restricted exceptions. One such exception permits adults aged 18 and older to possess in a public place 30 grams or less of dried legal cannabis or an equivalent amount of another four. A young person would commit a criminal offence by possessing more than five grams of dried licit cannabis and would be subject to the application of the youth Criminal Justice Act, which is based on principles of rehabilitation and reintegration. Nevertheless, Mr. Speaker, we are not supporting, nor are we promoting the idea that youth should be allowed to possess five grams or less of cannabis. We are, in fact, encouraging the creation of provincial and territorial offenses for possession amounts below five grams for young persons, thereby providing authority for police to seize the cannabis from young persons. Provinces would also have the ability to increase the minimum age for possession that would apply in their respective jurisdictions. Clause 9 of Bill C-45 creates a distribution offence. Distribute, as defined in Section 2, includes administering, giving, transferring, transporting, sending, delivering, providing or otherwise making available in any manner, whether directly or indirectly, and offering to distribute. Needless to say, Mr. Speaker, this is a definition which restricts a wide range of activities. And before I move on any further, Mr. Speaker, I would like to say that I will be splitting my time with the Honourable Member for Scarborough Southwest. Very important that we do that. Distribution of any amount of cannabis that is known to be illicit is prohibited. 
So is any distribution of cannabis, whether licit or illicit, to a person under 18 years of age. Adults would be permitted to distribute or give up to 30 grams of legal dried cannabis or an equivalent amount of another class to other adults. Part 1 of the Act also sets out restrictions related to promotion, packaging, labeling, display, and sales of cannabis, as well as the obligations on those licensed to conduct activities under the Act. For example, les articles. For example, sections 17 to 26 would ban the packaging of cannabis if there are reasonable grounds to believe that it may attract young people. Clause 29 bans the label or packaging in a way that would allow a young person to see them. Clause 30 deals with a similar type of ban dealing with accessories for cannabis. Information related to, to the promotion would include ingredients, THC. Promotion are intended to protect youth from being persuaded through marketing or advertising to consume cannabis. At the same time, consumers need access to clear, objective information to help make informed decision about consumption. Part 2 of Bill C-45 sets out a general ticketing scheme applicable to adults who commit minor offences. This part would enable a peace officer to issue tickets to individuals who are 18 years of age or older or to organizations. A ticket would be issued to a person who commits a less serious offence related to possession, distribution, sale or production. For example, public possession over 30 grams and up to 50 grams of dried licit cannabis or its equivalent would be subject to a ticket under proposed paragraph 51 sub 2a. If the accused pays within the period set out in the ticket, it would be considered a plea of guilty to the offence described in the ticket and the conviction would be entered into the judicial record of the accused. However, this judicial record must be kept separate and apart from other judicial records, and it must not be used for any purpose that would identify the accused as a person dealt with under the Cannabis Act. And that is under Clause 52. The ability to issue tickets would limit criminal prosecution for less serious offences and reduce the burden on the police and the criminal justice system, resulting in fewer court delays, Mr. Speaker, and I know that that's something that all members are very concerned about. Part 3 of the proposed Act sets out a general licensing scheme for the production, distribution, sale, importation and exportation of cannabis. Setting the parameters for the creation of a legal cannabis industry, Part 3 would provide the Minister of Health with authority and discretion to process applications and to issue licenses and permits for otherwise prohibited activities and to add license conditions. Part 3 also includes grounds for the Minister of Health to refuse to issue or amend or to suspend or revoke a license. For example, under proposed paragraph 627A, the powers provided that the Minister may refuse to issue, renew or amend a license or permit if doing so is likely to create a risk to public health or public safety, including the risk of cannabis being diverted to an illicit market or activity. Part 4 of Bill C-45 includes general authorizations for some cannabis-related activities. Clause 69 sets out minimum measures for the protection of uh, public health and public safety that would need to be included in provincial legislation governing sale. In particular, a person who is authorized to sell cannabis under a provincial act must be required to only sell cannabis that has been produced by a person authorized under the Federal Cannabis Act for commercial pur purposes, not sell cannabis to young persons, keep appropriate records, to take adequate measures to reduce the risk of cannabis that they uh, possess being diverted to an illicit market. And Part 5, finally, would authorize the Minister of Health to issue orders to verify compliance, prevent non-compliance, address issues related to public health and safety. Mr. Speaker, there are many other parts of this Cannabis Act which my honourable colleagues will be uh, speaking to, and I look forward to hearing their remarks, as I'm sure my colleagues do across the way. En conclusion, Monsieur le Président. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, Bill C-45 follows up on a commitment made by our government in the throne speech of 2015. The bill proposes a framework which is effective and well-balanced for the legalization and regulation of cannabis, which corresponds to the objectives of our government when it comes to health and public safety, protection of children and young people, as well as criminal justice. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.
questions and comments. The Honourable. I apologize. Speaker. The uh, questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Brantford Brant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask the uh, member um, about uh, how uh, the government proposes to handle the production and the distribution of uh, cannabis from First Nations. Um, we've done a, a very uh, poor job of controlling tobacco from First Nations to the extent that 62% of the product that's consumed in Canada is contraband tobacco coming from uh, operations on First Nations. How does the government propose to govern and handle uh, the production from First Nations in this country? The Honourable Parliament Secretary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my honourable colleague for the question. And in fact, he puts his finger on what is a central concern uh, with, the, with, the con with the concerns around the status quo of access to illicit cannabis. And the whole objective of this act is to take cannabis out of the possession of criminal organizations and gangs, which pose a threat not only to the Indigenous communities but also to our youth, and to put it under a strictly regulated and governed distribution process. So in answer to my honourable colleague, we will be working very closely with our partners provincially and territorially to ensure that there is a robust regulatory system in place to ensure the safe distribution from seed to sale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments, the Honourable Member for Belleuil Assembly. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague opposite for his remarks. Now, as you know, there are concerns that have been raised, that we've been raising regarding decriminalization and amnesty, because what's important to note, and the Prime Minister pointed it out himself when he talked about uh, the privilege of his own family, enabled a member of his own family to escape criminal consequences having consumed uh, marijuana recreationally, why all of a sudden has the government changed its opinion? The Prime Minister said during the campaign that through the legalization process, the issue of amnesty and uh, going back and uh, cancelling criminal records for something that's now uh, legal would be a cornerstone, but now we're in a situation where the Minister of Public Safety is saying the opposite. Once again, uh, why the government has changed its opinion? Can uh, the Honourable Member explain why that is? Parliament. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. President. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for his question. I have a great deal of respect for him. Uh, is a relevant one. Um, what we have said, Mr. Speaker, is that in order to ensure that there is a proper um, regulation of this particular substance, namely cannabis. We need to remove it from the hands of criminals and ensure that it is properly and safely regulated in cooperation with provinces and territories. The, 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 the problem with the decriminalization proposal that has been put forward with the NDP is that it does not address that risk. And as an interim measure, I don't think my colleague, uh, colleagues on the other side of the aisle want to see our youth or any other community put at risk, and that is why we are moving forward with Bill C-45 in its fashion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question and Questions and Merci, Comments, the Honourable Member, Member for Richmond, Arthur Basca. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and you won't surprise me, or you won't be surprised to hear me say that I don't agree with this bill. It's been improvised and simply cobbled together. When we listen to all the experts on the issue, experts uh, from the medical community, we really have trouble understanding it. So I'd like to ask very simple of uh, the member opposite. Now, several owners of apartments across the province have spoken to me in my writing more specifically, and they all ask me the same question. If the government, as part of this major project, well, has the government thought about or considered measures uh, to support property owners who don't want people to be using tenants to be using marijuana inside of their buildings or growing it, is there a line any kind that would protect those uh, apartment owners? Merci, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the member for his question. There is a lot of evidence from experts, a lot of comments, and a lot of work that has been considered and it's formed the basis of this bill. We're very much aware of the situation. We are working 
part with the provinces, with the municipalities, to create a regulated uh, system. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debates, reprise the debat. Uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Innovation, Science and Economic Development. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and it's a great pleasure for me to have this opportunity to rise this evening to, in support of uh, this bill. I want to start by congratulating the Minister of Justice and the Parliamentary Secretary and the Honourable Member for Scarborough Southwest for all of the work done on this bill. Mr. Speaker, is an important piece of legislation that delivers on a core commitment of our government to introduce legislation to legalize and strictly regulate cannabis in order to keep profits out of the hands of out of the hands of youth and and keep profits from criminals uh, in, in the uh, in the. Uh, in, the gangs and, and, uh, and illegal elements of society. Bill C-45 will move Canada forward in addressing the health and social harms that result from the current failed approach to cannabis. Bill C-45 will help reduce the role that organized crime currently plays in the production and distribution of cannabis in Canada. In addition, it will place our government in a better position to protect the health and safety of Canadians particularly youth. Last spring, our government tabled the Task Force on Cannabis Leg Legislation and Regulation. The Task Force was given a mandate to, to consult broadly across Canada with experts in law enforcement, public health, as well as with community groups and ordinary Canadians. Over 30,000 responses, Mr. Speaker, were received by the Task Force through an online consultation. In their final report, released this past December, the Task Force was clear. The current approach to cannabis is simply not working. Canadians, both youth and adults, use cannabis at high rates. Many do so without fully understanding the associated risks. They obtain their cannabis illegally to, benefit, to the benefit of organized crime. And the products they obtain are often produced in dangerous environments without any regard for the quality or health of the consumer. Science is clear, Mr. Speaker. Consumption of cannabis does come with risks. While some people use cannabis for therapeutic purposes, it can engender health risks for young people. We know that despite these risks, a segment of the Canadian population chooses to use cannabis in the same way that they choose to adopt other behaviors that may be detrimental to their health. As parliamentarians, is how best to mitigate these risks and better protect the health and well-being of Canadians. Our government believes that the answer is not in continuing to criminalize the possession of small amounts of cannabis. Such a policy would only serve to compound its public health and safety risks. Instead, Canadians will be better served by adopting a public health approach. Such an approach would, evolve, would involve a controlled and strictly regulated system with clear standards and requirements, backed with appropriate oversight and strong public education efforts. It is precisely this type of framework that Bill C-45 sets out to establish in Canada. Je le répète. La and I will reiterate the use of cannabis is not uh, exempt of risks. Increase significantly depending on a number of factors, including age at which use begins, frequency of use, duration of use, and the amount used. For example, youth are especially vulnerable as their brains are still developing, and this health risk increases when they begin to use cannabis in early adolescence. Particular health risks are also posed by illegally produced cannabis. Criminals do not worry, Mr. Speaker, about producing cannabis in a clean environment so that it is not contaminated with mold, bacteria, or heavy metals. They do not label their products to clearly communicate information about potency. They only care about making a profit and not getting caught. Notre gouvernement, donc. Our government wants to mitigate the risks and uh, detrimental aspects for health, and that explains the information campaign 
that has already been put out to, to Canadians. Our government has adopted a proactive approach when it comes to education and awareness for Canadians by using social media to put out information in areas such as driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol and other messages to encourage parents to speak to their children. Our government is also addressing the issue of addiction. We want to enhance the knowledge that the public has about addiction to help Canadians understand the risks associated with cannabis use, especially for youth and other vulnerable populations. Our government also wants to provide Canadians with the information they need to make informed decisions about the choice to use cannabis. Minimizing the harms and risks associated with cannabis use is also why Bill C-45 includes a number of powers that will allow our government to regulate the legal market. Under the bill, the Minister of Health would have the power to set regulatory requirements to address a broad range of health and safety issues. This includes requiring that cannabis is produced in a clean and sanitary environment and that it is appropriately packaged with clear information on the label with regard to product potency and important health information. To date, Mr. Speaker, I have focused my remarks on the effects of cannabis on health, and I've explained how a public health-based approach will be in a better position to mitigate these risks. However, I now want to go to risks for health and public safety due to the current approach for cannabis. The current approach aggravates risks because it creates a dynamic whereby Canadians who decide to use cannabis are forced to do so and to deal with criminals. Some may be related to, to organized crime that exposes Canadians to with the risk of violence and other criminal activities, including even more detrimental illegal drugs. By large illegal grow operations, including those that are found in suburban neighborhoods. This underground illegal activity can result in serious public health and safety issues, including explosions, fires, and damage to property. Concern about these public health and public safety risks are shared, Mr. Speaker, by many Canadians, which is why our government is moving forward with its commitment to legalize and strictly regulate cannabis within a cooperative framework with the provinces, territories, and municipalities. En déposant le projet de loi C-47, in tabling this bill, our government has put the health and safety of Canadians on the top of its priorities, and this is using a public health-based approach, which forms the basis of this bill. Regulations contained in C-45 are consistent with recommendations put forth by the task force. They are designed to better protect Canadians from health risks to restrict access to cannabis for young people and to reduce profits from the illegal market. Strict rules in place across the entire commercial supply for cannabis production, distribution and retail sale. It would provide the government with the ability to strictly regulate the safety and quality of cannabis products and to place limits on its promotion, packaging and labeling in order to reduce its appeal to youth. Through this bill, our government will also put in place a tracking system to follow cannabis products as they go from one stage or one step from growing to sales. And as a result, it won't be, it will be tracked and will, this will prevent uh, illicit cannabis from entering the legal logistical chain. This system will also make it possible to recall products and withdraw them from the market. C-45 proposes a comprehensive approach, Mr. Speaker, for the oversight and control of cannabis that would provide Canadians with access to a legal source of cannabis that is strictly regulated for safety and quality. 
as with all products regulated in Canada, Mr. Speaker, including food, medicine and consumer products, Canadians should be able to have access to cannabis that they know meets minimum standards for safety and quality. Colleagues, by establishing a robust regulatory framework for legal access to cannabis, supported by a strong public education and awareness campaign, Bill C-45 provides an opportunity for, for Canada to significantly reduce these risks and to better protect its youth. Et Monsieur le Président, and, Mr. Speaker, I have three children, 2018 and 16 years of age, and so this is an issue that I deal with regularly, and I honestly believe that this bill, based on facts and studies, based on science, is the best approach to regulate and control cannabis. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Richmond, Arthabasca. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I won't repeat that I completely disagree with this bill. I think that everyone in the House already knows that. However, I would like to put a question to my colleague opposite. He wrapped up his speech with something very interesting. He talked about his personal uh, situation. I have uh, three children. His are older than mine. But he said just how important it was for this bill to be based based on science, research, data, real data. But what does science and data say unanimously across the world about cannabis that under the age of 25 it's dangerous to use marijuana? What does this bill say? It's authorized as of age 18. Now, if my colleague were so sincere in his remarks, why would he not go to his colleague who is in charge of this bill and ask, as a minimum, that the age be increased to 25. And that way he could leave science as the basis of his speech. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, Mr. Speaker, I am very sincere in the comments that I've made. Clearly, the current system for young people and teenagers doesn't work. Teens can go out and get cannabis anywhere in the system. It's very easy for them to find. At age 18, Mr. Speaker, teenagers have the right to vote. They can go to war to defend our country. At age 18, young people are adults who are capable and in a position to make their own choices in many other areas and for many other options in their lives. The Honourable Member for Kootenai, Columbia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to my colleague for his speech. Um, back in March, I held a telephone town hall in my riding of Kootenai, Columbia. 3,300 people stayed on the phone for an hour. Great deal of interest in the riding. Uh, at a panel of, of experts that they could phone into as well. Now, one of the concerns that was really prominent in my riding was trying to ensure that small growers, which are very prevalent on parts of my riding, uh, continue to have a role in the future of legalizing cannabis in Canada. And if not, I can pretty well guarantee you that uh, there will continue to be a black market for marijuana. So interested in the uh, members' views on trying to ensure that co-ops and small growers are part of the future. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of Innovation. I thank the Honourable Member from Kootenai, Columbia, uh, for, his, uh, for his, uh, um, uh, his question and his thoughts. Um, this is a place where we will have to work, Mr. Speaker, with the provinces. Uh, in terms of the actual distribution system, uh, we will work closely with the provinces, territories and municipalities uh, to ensure that a, a system is put in place that takes into account uh, the, the desires of the province in terms of distribution. Um, in, this, in this particular case, we have, uh, we have given the right uh, to individuals to have up to four plants. After that, we will work with our partners to, to uh, fill out the rest of the system. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. It's my first opportunity to rise to this debate on Bill C-45. I do think the government has overall gotten a good balance on this. I think it's appropriate that there are many gaps to be filled in by provincial regulation, 
I'm particularly concerned that a product that has such high profit margins not be overtaken and run by the cigarette industry or any of the existing large corporations that could force out, as my colleague from Kootenai, Columbia mentioned, smaller producers. In my own area of southern Vancouver Island, there are many people in what might be described as a craft industry of edibles for pain relief. They're enormously rigorous about what they produce. I wouldn't want to see them forced out by large corporate interests. But I do have one concern about the legislation as drafted, and I wonder if it's open to amendments. And that is that the punishments found uh, in the Act for those uh, who uh, violate provisions of this bill could be subjected to indictable offenses and prison sentences up to 14 years. These strike me as excessive. I wonder if the government's open to amendment. The Honourable Parliament Secretary. Um, I thank the, the Honourable Member, Mr. Speaker, uh, for her question. Um, I, I will leave the, the amendment process to our committee uh, under the guidance of our, of our parliamentary secretary and, and, and generally uh, the government. Uh, however, uh, I, I do note that as a rule there is some flexibility uh, in sentencing that, that, uh, in, in terms of the power that, that uh, the discretionary power that judges have. Um, and I do think we will, uh, at the end of the day, strike the appropriate balance uh, throughout all of our legislation. Uh, just before we go to resuming debate, I'll just, um, to the benefit of all uh, honourable members, uh, remind uh, that uh, during the time for questions and comments, uh, which, uh, by the way, has been uh, quite uh, subscribed to this evening, there's lots of interesting questions and comments, so we'll try to keep interventions to no more than one minute, but we'll go by the usual rotation, giving the preference to uh, parties who are not uh, parties of the member who has just presented their speech, but rather to the others. And the same thing will happen, of course, when the speech moves to the other side of the House. So that's the usual rotation. Uh, it's not to the exclusion of the party, of the member who just spoke, but uh, for the most part to the other parties uh, that were not uh, his or her party. Uh, we'll go to resuming debate and the honourable member for Langley Aldergrove. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. A real honour to, uh, to speak in the House again. Uh, I'll, I spoke last night on uh, C-45, excuse, yes, C-46, and uh, tonight on C-45. I'll be sharing my, my time with uh, the a member from uh, Belshaz, uh, H. Levy. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, that member had uh, uh, built C-266, dealing with impaired driving and uh, um, the Prime Minister, uh, interestingly, had uh, provided a letter to an organization um, made up of people that have lost loved ones to impaired drivers and uh, killed by drunk drivers, impaired drivers. And um, they've asked for legislation, uh, tough legislation, with mandatory minimums. And the Prime Minister signed a letter prior to the election promising to introduce legislation with mandatory minimums. And, um, and 266 was, uh, was that bill, and uh, sadly, the Prime Minister has uh, broken another promise not supporting that. We have um, uh, a legalization of cannabis, of uh, marijuana uh, in Canada being proposed um, through this bill, C-45, C-46, then deals with uh, all the new impaired drivers that are expected to be on the road. I listened intently to the Justice Minister uh, and to other speakers on the other side, uh, made notes and tried to summarize what they're saying over and over and over again. Um, it's, uh, trust me, uh, we want to keep cannabis out of the hands of children, young Canadians. We want to make sure we keep cannabis out of the hands of organized crime. And that's their motive. Um, but this is being rushed, rammed through a promised end date of a normal two-year process uh, that, no, it won't be to your process. It's going to be ready and in place by July 1st, Canada Day of next year. Um, why the rush? Why are we telling the Senate they must rush this through, uh, the new appointed independent senators? Um, why are we ignoring science? Well, they've, they said that they've consulted, consulted thousands of Canadians. We have, uh, within this, Parliament, we have former police chiefs. We have parliament, parliamentary secretary uh, with the government is a former police chief and, um, and clearly had a position that uh, legalizing marijuana would not take it out of organized crime. 
Um, but why the about face? Why the 180? Uh, we've seen that also with the finance minister uh, about um, uh, old age security, uh, making an about face once uh, a person becomes uh, a member of the government. Uh, it appears uh, that the prime minister has an agenda to keep that as his number one flag promise of this parliament to legalize marijuana uh, and to do it by July 1st of next year. So. Is there truth uh, behind the, the claim that it'll keep cannabis out of the hands of children and young Canadians? Well, what are they proposing? That every household, including households with children, will be able to have four plants. And we know that four plants is 12 plants. Four usable producing plants up to a meter tall. And, and then there's plants that are halfway toward that, four plants. Uh, and then also the plants, the four plants that have just been planted so that they can start growing and get ready for it to being harvest, harvested. So we know that through the medical marijuana program that four plants means 12 plants. So we have in homes, every home across Canada can legally have this. Is that going to keep cannabis out of the hands of children? I think a reasonable person would say uh, no, that doesn't make any sense. Um, then youth 12 years age up to the age of 18, 18 there and older, they're able to legally have on their possession up to 30 grams. What is 30 grams? It's 60 joints. You can, a Canadian, right now, if a Canadian is found with 60, gra 60 joints, 30 grams in, in their possession, um, are they criminalized? No. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm sure many of us have spent time with the police and see how they handle uh, illegal drugs. Are people uh, stuck in jail and criminalized? No, they, they're confiscated. So under C-45, they won't be confiscated anymore. They'll be left. They're able to legally walk around with 60 joints in their pocket or their backpack, 18 and older. How about the 12-year-olds up to 18? They can have five grams legally is what's being proposed. Is that keeping it out of the hands of our children? Absolutely not. So what this government says they're going to do and what they actually do is, and there's a, the proverb, a, a wise saying, a tree is known by its fruit. And what kind of fruit are we seeing on this, making it easier for children to have access to that? In fact, there's in many situations where children do not have access to it, they now will have access to it. Will this make, uh, will it take it out of the hands of organized crime? According to the parliamentary secretary, former uh, uh, police chief, no, it won't. According to uh, experts, police, people with uh, law enforcement background in our caucus and in other caucuses, it will not take it out of their hands. What it'll do is, right now it's illegal, but taking it out of organized crime and, and getting rid of the illegal aspect of it, what is illegal now will be made legal. Therefore, that's how they're dealing with the illeg illegality problem. And organized crime will still want to make their money in some way. So they now can have 12-year-olds to 18-year-olds running around with, uh, with some uh, 5 grams, 10, 10, 10, 10 joints. So they have 9.5 joints, totally legal. It won't be confiscated, 18 and older, backpacks full of joints. A, more, a majority of the government is saying the majority of Canadians believe it should not be a criminal offence for youth to have cannabis. So the option would be to decriminalize it. That has not been a proposal that has been presented by the government. It's legalize it, make it available, they can grow it in every home, Children can have it in their possession legally, uh, and it will not be able to be confiscated. Uh, if this is not what Canadians expected from this government. This has gone far beyond what is reasonable. They've also said that their new proposal, this new legislation, is based on science and consultation. But the consultation that they received from law enforcement is, this is flawed, this will lead, this will <laughs> will restrict their ability to take it out of the hands of children. It, this will restrict law enforcement with the opportunity to deal with children and say, you know, that you, should, you can't have this. This is bad for you. 
and science has said it's bad for them. We've heard it time and time again. The, the Canadian Medical Association has said this is harmful for developing minds. The government is saying, well, it, it may be, but we don't want them to have a criminal record, which they're not going to get anyway. It'll be confiscated, but thank you, Mr. Speaker. So what is being proposed by the government is not based on science. It's based on politics. It's based on political promises made during an election. So will this keep, make Canada safer? Will this help and protect the health and safety of Canadians? Absolutely not. A reasonable person will say this makes no sense. And why are you for going ahead against science, against law enforcement, and, and, and risking the health and safety of Canadians? Now, I haven't even, I don't have time to get into the issue of road safety and all these new, new impaired drivers going on our, our roads and, and the cost to train the police officers, the drug recognition experts, the DREs, yep. and, the, and there are no devices to determine whether a person is impaired. They can have these little uh, uh, strips that will indicate that there is marijuana in the person's system, but it does not determine whether or not there's impairment. So, it's, it's going to be very difficult to get people that are truly impaired off the roads. We do not have the policing resources. What we have is legislation, C-45, being rammed through by July 1st of next year with no enforcement, no funding, no preparation, no equipment to protect the health and safety of Canadians. I am shocked why the government is doing this, and I think Canadians are shocked too as they, as they listen to this debate. So, this is going to will go on to justice, Mr. Speaker, the Justice Committee, and um, it'll be interesting to see whether or not the government is open to any amendments, because what they're proposing doesn't make sense. Canadians don't support this. They support taking time to do this right, and uh, I hope the government is flexible enough to listen to common sense, be reasonable, and base something on science that will be good for Canada that will truly protect our youth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions and comments. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I've had the opportunity over the last 18 months uh, to, to work very closely with experts in the area of the public health, public safety, justice, and problematic substance use. I've, I've read literally hundreds of reports uh, based from, on, from and, and originating from a number of different scientific and health organizations. And we have worked very hard to develop a policy based on the best advice of experts and the, and the, the expertise that was available to us. Now, the member opposite has ascribed certain statements to me which, quite frankly, are inaccurate, and I would urge him, if he's going to attempt to quote me, please do so accurately. But I would also ask him, Mr. Speaker, Canada has the highest rates of cannabis use among its young people in the world. And the cannabis that our young people are using, they're acquiring from the criminal element, people who have no concern for their health, their safety, the, the contaminants and the other dangerous substances, or the health effects, or the social harms that can be inflicted upon our kids as a result of this activity. We also know that the organized crime that profits from the sale to our kids is making billions of dollars in this country. And I would simply ask the member opposite, are you content with that, that situation, that our kids are in the hands of criminals, that their health is being put at risk, or w and would you continue to perpetuate a system that has put our kids at risk, or would you take the steps necessary, based on the advice and the expertise that we've made available to ourselves and to this Parliament, to put in place a system of strict regulatory control so that we know the potency, purity, and the providence of what is being consumed by Canadians, that we have a more effective regulatory regime for its production, distribution and consumption, so that we can keep it away from kids, so that we can protect the health of our, our citizens, the safety of our The uh, Honourable Member for Langley Aldergrove. Oh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank that member for his years of service in law enforcement, uh, and I do respect him and, and appreciate what he's done uh, throughout his career. And I welcome here, him uh, into this House. Uh, but what he's sharing now, I believe, is a 180 change uh, to suggest that not being able to take the drugs out of children that are found, and I, I've spent a lot of time with RCMP on ride-alongs, not drive-alongs, 
I, I took the training and I was on the bike squad and I was out and they would confiscate these drugs from the kids that are in the park late at night smoking joints. Uh, what he's proposing is that we leave those drugs with those kids. They can legally have up to five grams if they're 12 up to 18. If they're 18 and lower, older and they've got 60 gr joints in the backpack, the police can't take this anymore. They can't confiscate it. And what he's saying, Mr. Speaker, to me and to a lot of Canadians doesn't make sense. Why would we allow them to continue on with this dangerous drug with these developing minds? And uh, I, I think what, what is illegal is now going to be called legal, and that is not the way you deal with organized crime. Thank you. Questions and comments? Mr. Kamantai, the Honourable Member for Beaches East York. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. I have a simple question. We've talked a lot about harms in this House. Many substances have harms. Cannabis has potential harms. Alcohol has potential harms. Tobacco has potential harms. And I'd like to ask the member if he wants to uh, keep cannabis a criminal offence, what else would he like to criminalize? The Honourable Member for Langley Aldergrove. Well, Mr. Speaker, I, I didn't say I wanted to keep cannabis a criminal offence. I wanted, I would suggest that it become a ticketing offence and that the police can still confiscate the drug. What is the benefit of doing that? Well, already the police can confiscate that drug. The Liberals are saying, leave it with the kids. Leave it in with their possessions. It's small and we don't want to criminalize them. They're not being criminalized now. So, again, it's a, it's a government of smoke and mirrors. It's, they, they know what to say, but they don't do it. And it's, it's really a, a crying shame, Mr. Speaker. Well, we have time for one more short question. The Honourable Member for Lang, or pardon me, for Nanaimo Ladysmith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In my riding of Nanaimo Ladysmith, Tilray is one of the largest employers. It's under the Conservative government, uh, was licensed as a medical marijuana grower and distributor. And there's some observation, although they followed all the rules, it's kind of like growing in a bunker. The over, uh, over investment that was required for medical marijuana producers um, ha has been um, daunting, I think, for the industry. Nevertheless, they followed all the rules. They're doing chemo-induced nausea research, uh, botanist, horticulturalist. It's a highly professional operation. I wonder what the members' uh, comments are on how medical marijuana can fit into this uh, next phase of marijuana uh, legislation. Well, member for Langley Aldergrove. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I know personally of uh, many cases where people that uh, had nausea or other serious uh, medical problems, and uh, they found the use of uh, marijuana oils to be very helpful. Uh, I'm not a scientist. I don't know. And I, I think it'll be very interesting over the coming years that uh, there needs to be research uh, to find out what are the benefits of the use of marijuana oils. Uh, uh, smoking and bringing into your lungs a, a foreign body smoke is not good. Uh, so maybe the, we need to look at what are the benefits but what's being proposed by the government is allowing our youth to have access, to have our homes filled with marijuana plants. Uh, and it's not what Canadians expected. It's not what Canadians want. Thank you. Resuming debate. The Honourable Member from Berchas. Indeed. Thank you very much. Ms. Jiminity. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank my colleague for having shared his time with me a member with whom I had uh, the chance to prepare a bill for impaired driving. And we can see that tonight's bill is an issue that's going to worsen with uh, through this Liberal bill. This is uh, something that we can be resumed in two words, Mr. Speaker, improvisation and making it banal to and uh, ordinary to consume cannabis. We heard it again uh, this evening. The Prime Minister and Liberal leader is, is justifying this proposed legalization of cannabis, but in fact it's just a smoke screen because we can see it, and as my colleague said, it would be very easy to simply use ticketing, which would allow us to protect young people. But what Liberals wish to do, and this is what they often do, is making their friends wealthy at the expense of Canadians' health and the health of our young people. You know. We set up uh, 30 
uh, permits to produce medical marijuana, which were granted by our Conservative government. We did it with no interference, and it wasn't, uh, didn't apply to recreational marijuana use, as the government is now proposing to do. The problem we have, Mr. Speaker, currently is that the government wishes to uh, make their little liberal friends healthy, uh, wealthy uh, at the expense of the health and safety of Canadians. Of is crony capitalism. For the rest of us, it's bread and circuses. On a resserré les règles du financement politique, Monsieur le Président. We tightened political party funding rules, Mr. Speaker, but that's not enough. Because what we'll see now is an industry that's going to create billionaires, but billionaires who uh, will be uh, become billionaires because of government largesse. Unfortunately, this is really what's behind this bill. We've seen people like Chuck Rafici, who is the former treasurer of the Liberal Party and who also co-founded Canopy Growth, a company that is now worth billions of dollars and who was previously what? Well, the financial director of the Liberal Party up until last summer. Indeed, Mr. Rafici was working at the Liberal Party when he co-founded Tweed, which became what? the biggest producer of ca medical cannabis in the country. Mr. Rifici, a well-known liberal, was also on the board of director of which company, Aurora Cannabis, up till last May 8th, and is now the president of a company called Cannabis Wheaton, created to help cannabis producers enter the stock market. Can you see the link here, Mr. Speaker? Cannabis, liberal, legalization, a great deal of money. But what about the safety of Canadians? What about protecting our youth against a drug that scientists tell us has devastating effects on the development of young brains? And I'm not done yet. What about the co-founder of the only authorized producer of medical cannabis in Quebec, the hydro hydropothecary, Adam Miron is his name. And who is he? He was the national director of the Liberal Party and the national director of Young Liberals of Canada. And that's not all, Mr. Speaker. There's also the, forest, the former uh, Liberal Minister, Martin Cochon, who is now a member of the board of directors of Dell Shell Therapeutics, which produces cannabis in Toronto, and who recently received uh, a, a license from the government. And it's going to continue like that. Two for other former Liberal Ministers, Herb Dalloway, who is a member of the Board of Directors of National Green Biomed, and another uh, Liberal Senator, Larry Campbell, who has headed a pot, POTUS uh, Pharmaceuticals. And all of these people are waiting for a, per a license to produce cannabis from Health Canada. Once again, we see many Liberal links here and affiliations. I do agree with my new Bloc colleague, the MP, the member for Longueuil, who, when faced with such uh, shameless Liberal cronyism. In many heads of big medical marijuana companies attended what? A liberal fundraising, even where they had privileged access to whom? the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice, who was charged with the task of implementing this Cannabis Legalization Act. Well, the Liberal then, since it was made public, had no choice but to reimburse the donations. Well, they can't reimburse Canadians for their misplaced trust in this supposed transparent, open government. Clearly, the only way to hold the government accountable today is to catch them red-handed. They've proven that they cannot be trusted to come forward and walk the talk. It's clear to me, Mr. Speaker, that during the election campaign, the Liberal leader promised the moon. He promised the moon to the millennials. But what he was really doing was that he was promising things to his own Liberal friends with billions to be made through the cannabis bank. But in fact, it's just going to lead to disillusionment for Canadians, especially young Canadians, who are going to be stuck with what? They're going to be hooked on these drugs, and they'll probably be spending nights under the full moon for 
those who have lost everything because of these irresponsible liberal measures. Unfortunately, as we were reminded by our colleague by Lindley Aldergrove, it has been proven. Legalizing marijuana in Colorado had three extremely negative consequences. First of all, there was an incre there was increased consumption amongst youth. We agree with the Liberals. The consumption of cannabis among youth is a problem. What we're saying is that the measure that they are proposing will only increase that those levels of consumption. So that's not a good way to deal with that problem. The second tragic fact is that the number of fa fatal accidents, the same thing that my Lang colleague from Langley was trying to uh, counter, which is the leading uh, cause of death in Canada, road accidents. We've already got so many problems with alcohol, and now we're going to uh, increase impaired driving. Uh, people will be impaired under the with drugs. And in Colorado, they saw that in with increased consumption among young people and dramatic increases of road accidents that were related to the consumption of drugs. In fact, the solution is simple, but it's not going to help uh, the liberal friends of uh, this government that wants to make billions of uh, dollars, and that is ticketing. Or as the French say, it means that when a police officer finds a young person with a, in a small amount of drugs in, on, on his or her person, it's a simple fine. It leads to a simple fine. It's very simple. It's so simple. But this is not a measure that, measure that is going to lead to wealthier liberals, especially small liberal friends, little liberal friends. So that's the problem that that solution has, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, as we saw, there is a hidden agenda amongst uh, Liberals. Even the MP, my, my colleague, the MP from Erskine Smith, said that he wanted to uh, legalize all drugs, which really doesn't inspire faith in the liberal current liberal approach. Microphone, please. Hello. Order, please. Order. Hello. Order. Order, please. The honourable member. Call to order with respect to using the name of another honorable member. I'm sure that the honorable member knows uh, that you can identify a member bus only by writing. Thank you. You are quite right, Mr. Speaker, and I wish to apologize to uh, that member. I should have said that it was. Uh, uh, a Toronto MP, and I should have just named him by his riding, but it is a, Tor a Toronto Liberal, and he w has said that he wishes to le legalize all drugs. So is this a slippery slope? We're beginning with the legalization of marijuana, and what bill, is, what further bills will the Liberals be presenting us with to legalize other drugs? So he said they wanted to decriminalize the p possession and consumption of all drugs, is what um, that member said which is not quite exactly going to reassure parents listening to us tonight who, wishes, who wish to protect young people and youth and don't wish artificial paradises to be offered to their children. Obviously, we want to protect future generations, which is why allowing the culture of these plants in uh, people's homes is just going to expose children to psychotropic uh, substances that can be very dangerous for them. So there's much, we can do much better things than offer drugs. And Mr. Speaker, earlier you said that uh, that I was starting to run out of time. But this is a failure. It has, has proved itself to be a failure in Colorado. So why should we go down this hazardous road that's ha that may have devastating effects and it, on our young people, whereas ticketing, which is an inexpensive solution, and will result and will solve that problem. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. Question comment the honourable member for Laurentide Labelle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When I go around my riding and I ask young people, and I ask young people why, if they, why they, do they want uh, more better access to marijuana or to beer? And they always answer marijuana. Do they believe 
that the current system is working if they don't and if the answer is no why didn't they do anything to fix it the Honourable Member for Berchas, Les Etchemendivis. I thank the Honourable Member for his question. And what I was saying was that the measure, the measure proposed by the Liberals is worse than the status quo. As, as we've seen in Colorado, an increased consumption of drugs amongst youth, an increase in the number of uh, highway fatalities and road fatalities, as well as increased organized crime. So the solution is ticketing. And that is what is going to allow us to reduce drug consumption amongst youth. Number four, Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'd like to, uh, to, we've seen in the past that prohibition hasn't worked, it didn't work with alcohol. It's not working with marijuana today. Today, we, our youth are, are the highest consumers of marijuana, of cannabis uh, in the world. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we're, all we're doing is making criminals wealthy. We don't know the composition of uh, the cannabis that our youth are smoking today. Uh, the, the balance between CD, uh, CBD and, and THC, which is something that we, we really need to, to have an understanding of. Um, should we be allowing criminals to, to continue to profit off of this? And should we be allowing criminals to continue to manipulate the genetic and biochemistry of, uh, of this drug, uh, just as we used to have with, with the uh, under prohibition with uh, those who produced alcohol? Or should we be using the revenues from this to educate, enforce, uh, and rehabilitate uh, youth uh, rather than once again compensating uh, criminals? Deputy de Belchasse, please at your main lady. Honorable member from uh, Belchasse, at your main lady. The problem with the uh, proposed approach by the government is that it will actually increase organized crime activities, as it has uh, been the case in uh, Washington State and Colorado. But more than that, not only would it increase organized crime, but when Colorado legalized marijuana, it became the number one state in the, country, in the United States for teen marijuana use, with teen rates jumping over 12%. In both Washington State and Colorado, the illegal black market for drugs has exploded with organized crime. So the, the project proposed, tabled by the government, is a way to increase organized crime in this country. Is it what the member wants? I don't think so. I don't think that this is what his constituent wants. That's why he should not support that bill as it is tabled. Questions and comments? Question commentaire. The Deputy de Jonquière. The Honourable Member for Jonquière. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Bill C-45. My, uh, mother told me about uh, a place I visited in Jonquière, Les Havres du Fier. And this is uh, for persons with uh, substance abuse, uh, both drugs and alcohol. They have seen an increasing problems over the last few years in the people who seek treatment. They see people who are trying to go back to a normal life. And they see that they're dealing with many teenagers and young adults, and trying to, they're trying to help them to live, lead a sober life and learn how to love themselves and, have, and be confident, find a job, and live a life that uh, is uh, quote unquote normal. But of course, if you have a substance abuse problem, you always have to live with that, but you can learn how to live with it and manage it. My colleague is right. The government should be investing in prevention, in awareness, but also in such treatment uh, institutions. The Honourable Member for Béchas, Les Etchemelivy. I'd like to thank the member for Jean-Pierre for her question with respect to, to awareness, education. It's very important to make young people aware of the devastating effect that the drug use can have on them. and. With the approach that's being put forth by the government, it's uh, improvised, and they're trivializing drugs, even if it's not adopted. With this approach that the government's using, they're trivializing drug use among young people. And drugs are already having a devastating uh, effect on our young people. That's why this bill, in its current form, is having a detrimental impact to on our young people. Eight, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. Avant toute chose, je... Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to start by saying that I'll be sharing my time with the member for Charleswood, St. James, Assiniboia, Headingley. Now, first of all, I'd like to say, Mr. Speaker, just how proud I am to be part of a government that had the courage, the audacity, and the lucidity to see this debate as it is. Now, this is a substance that's banned. Nonetheless, Canadians, 12% of Canadians, according to StatsCan, are using cannabis. And in a, something that came out by Radio-Canada, the survey showed 17%. And this is contributing to generating work for a market. We're talking about organized crime. It represents some $7 billion per year. And it puts Canadians who are otherwise law-abiding citizens who work and pay their taxes in a situation where they have to deal with criminals with all the uh, problems uh, that can, that can lead to because of violence uh, contact with other drugs and they may uh, face uh, charges f and uh, a record that will follow them for their entire lives because of possession of a small amount of cannabis so they're being forced to, to deal with criminals who aren't concerned about the quality of what they're selling, or the harmlessness, or the safe nature of it. Who do criminals sell to? Do they check for ID, for ages? No. So in Canada, we have a situation, it's easier for a minor to buy marijuana than alcohol or cigarettes. And minors in Canada are the ones who are using the most, uh, according to the OECD. And this is of concern to us because on our side of the house and on the other side, we're not banalizing or trivializing it. We know the impact that it has. But it's specifically because it's not a trivial substance that we need to change the approach because the current approach is a failure for our young people. Now, Mr. Speaker, defenders of the status quo are sticking their hand head so deeply into the sand that they don't see the situation as it is. We're proposing more of the same, more of the same failure to our kids, more of the same failure to our communities, more of the same failure to Canadians. If you keep doing what you've always gotten, you're going to keep getting what you've always... If you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always gotten. And the current approach is a failure. It needs to be changed, Mr. Speaker. It needs to be changed responsibly. This is what we told Canadians, and this is precisely what we are doing. The proposed Cannabis Act, which we're debating tonight, would create a legal framework that will allow for the establishment of a regulated industry that provides controlled access to cannabis for adult Canadians. It would establish a system that, over time, will displace the illicit market for cannabis and keep profits out of the hands of organized crime. It will better protect youth by establishing a strict set of controls designed to restrict their access to cannabis. The new system will also permit the new system will also help to protect the health of Canadians, Canadians who are adults, as I already mentioned, by ensuring that cannabis comes from a legal market and will have been produced in a controlled environment and is properly labeled and does not contain dangerous chemicals or additives. This will also relieve the burden for the criminal justice system because we won't be taking action against uh, can Canadians who have a small quantity of cannabis in their possession. That is the objective of C45, uh, Mr. Speaker, the bill that we are debating here this evening. Visions in the proposed Cannabis Act and describe how these parts of the, bills of the bill would achieve these objectives. Let me begin with the parameters for legal access to cannabis so that the current illegal market is diminished and ultimately displaced. Our government has made it clear that it is taking a public health approach to cannabis legalization and regulation, and that the legal production, distribution, and sale of the substance will be subject to strict regulatory controls and standards. This means that any business seeking to serve as a commercial producer or seller of cannabis will need first to have a license or other type of government authorization. Under this approach, Governments, whether they be provincial or federal, would have the ability to establish licensing requirements for businesses, 
in order to keep criminals out and to allow the participation of legitimate businesses. These requirements are also designed to make sure that legally produced cannabis is not diverted to the illegal market and that, conversely, illegally produ produced cannabis does not end up on store shelves. Our government and I most definitely con are confident that Bill C-45 sets the conditions for a legal and appropriately regulated cannabis industry to emerge across Canada that will displace the current illegal market. Our government is also confident that the cannabis available through the regulated supply chain will be safer than the cannabis that is available on the streets today. And that leads me to talking about objectives that I mentioned briefly earlier, protecting the public health of adults who choose to use cannabis. A comprehensive regula regulatory framework will be put in place. This will cover labeling, products, content, and this will help to better protect Canadians. And uh, what the opposition benches are saying, uh, it won't work, we'll leave the illegal nature in, intact. Our approach is to better protect young people. There will be a specific interdiction to sell cannabis in any form who is under the age of 18, in any form. Any person doing so could face a, a penalty of 14 years in prison. Bill C-45 would make it illegal to sell products which appeal specifically to youth. Bill C-45 would also enact a comprehensive suite, suite of advertising restrictions designed to protect youth from promotions and other messaging that could encourage them to use cannabis. These provisions, modeled on similar rules that have been used successfully to protect youth from inducements to use tobacco, would prohibit any advertising that could make cannabis appealing to a young person. Taken together, these provisions in Bill C-45 would establish a system that would provide adult Canadians with access to legal cannabis through a controlled market. It would decrease the demand for cannabis from the illicit market and diminish the role played by organized crime. At the same time, the Act would introduce rigorous controls to ensure that cannabis is not sold or marketed to youth and that legal cannabis is produced and sold in accordance with appropriate regulatory standards. As I mentioned earlier, another objective of C45 is to reduce the prejudice, the, the word social that is associated with the criminalization and possession of small amounts of cannabis. Someone who finds themselves uh, with a criminal record would lose job opportunities, face travel bans, and there are other consequences that affect the legal system. It places a considerable burden on our police resources and our, and our criminal justice system. To remedy that, Bill C-45 would put an end to the strict interdiction to possess and would authorize Canadians of adult age to have up to 30 grams of the dried cannabis on their person. I would also seek to avoid the negative, lifelong consequences of possessing very small amounts of cannabis. Bill C-45 proposes that youth under 18 years of age would not be subject to criminal prosecution for possession of up to 5 grams of cannabis. Our government also uh, committed to work with the provinces and territories to encourage the creation of non-criminal provincial offenses that would prohibit youth from possessing any amount of cannabis. This approach would provide police with the authority to seize any amount of cannabis found in the possession of a young person while not rendering them to liable sanctions, which I think any sensible person would agree to. Dans la foulée de ce virage politique significatif, in, there is another very important objective for our government is to ensure that Canadians who need cannabis for medical medicinal purposes can continue to purchase it. I must have uh, about a minute left. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I will conclude by saying that I'm convinced of one thing. Prohibition in the current uh, form is a failure. We need to change our approach uh, to cannabis and the very strict framework that we are putting in place to legalize it will have a positive impact. Thank you. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Oshawa. Thank you very much, and I appreciate the Parliamentary Secretary's speech. Uh, except, Mr. Speaker, he continues to ignore the actual facts out there. The Liberal government says that they want to bring this forward. 
to keep the proceeds out of the hands of criminals and also uh, keep it out of the hands of kids. We've seen with the facts in Colorado that as far as the criminal element is concerned, it does not decrease the criminal element. And as far as the safety is concerned, I don't want to speak for my own opinion, but the Canadian Medical Association Journal just yesterday came out with a, an editorial lambasting this government for the irresponsible approach that they want to bring forward for legalizing marijuana. They talked about these four plants available in everyone's home. You can have up to four plants. That is just common 